Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Evening Devotions. Remember that if you want to tune in to everything that we're offering online, all you need to do is go to godamong.us, godamong.us on the internet, and you'll be able to click and link on to pretty much everything that we do, and we have plenty to choose from. Um, for tonight's devotional, I've chosen um, as a text the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, 4 to 7. Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and lost one. Wouldn't you leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the lost one until you found it? When found, you can be sure you would put it across your shoulders, rejoicing. And when you got home, call in your friends and neighbors saying, Celebrate with me, I found my lost sheep. Count on it. There's more joy in heaven over one sinner's rescued life than over 99 good people in no need of rescue. Do you remember the last time we were together and um, we talked about the loaves and the fishes? And I taught that if you understand or can create in your mind the proper image of the place where Jesus is teaching, the depth and meaning of the parable sometimes drastically increases. In that text, Jesus intentionally brought the crowd of about 10,000 people to a very lonely place that obviously had no place to purchase food or bread. And then he orders his disciples, feed the crowd. Well, after seeing Jesus teach and do amazing things, it's surprising that all they could say is, we only have a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread. <sighs> well, it wasn't just... Jesus' miracle of multiplying the loaves and fishes, it was that Jesus brought them to this lonely place where there wasn't any material food to eat, a place where they couldn't do what Jesus asked them to do. But the disciples learned, they learned about the gift and the power that we have when we are walking with the one who is our true heavenly food. Jesus is the bread of life. Well, Today's parable is similar. I know you've seen tons of um, pictures of a Scandinavian Jesus looking for his sheep in a park in the Midwest that is green and lush, like right now. Or we see the same Scandinavian Jesus effortlessly carrying a super clean sheep over beautiful lush green grass. Now, I've worked with sheep. Um, this image to me is rather outrageous. Or the cartoon-type flannel graph Jesus finding a frisky, clean white lamb in a bush, waiting to be found. Well, get this imagery out of your head. First of all, um, there are no white people in the Bible. Um, Charlton Heston was not in the Bible. Jesus had brown skin, like most of the people that you see in Palestine today. Plus, the place where the shepherds watched their sheep was not flat, lush, green grass. It was rocky with deep holes and even along cliffs. The shepherd had to lead the sheep from one spot of grass amongst the rocks to another one. And yes, oftentimes on the edges of cliffs because that's where the grass was. Years back, I, I was a seminarian and I was walking from Jerusalem or hiking from um, Jerusalem to Jericho in a place that's called the Wadi Kelt. Um, it's a pretty amazing place, and yes, you can make that walk, and down there there's a monastery, and there's um, praying hermits that are still up, and they, they stay up in the in the rocky areas. Um, but when I, as I was going on, I looked up, and it's just straight up, and, and um, I could see a young shepherd with a whole lot of sheep on the very edge of this cliff. And I just was shocked. I mean, the, the shepherd was probably a teenager with leather sandals. And yes, he carried a staff. And what he was doing was helping his sheep go from one piece of grass between some rocks to another one. And they had to do it on the cliff because um, even though it was dangerous, they had to find food. There was no choice. Well, the people listening to Jesus' parable, well, upon hearing that, the shepherd only lost one sheep. 
um, especially on that land, they probably would have thought, ah, 99%, that's a pretty good survival rate. The one lost is the price of doing business. The shepherd will still make a profit with the 99. End of story. But for what purpose is Jesus teaching this parable? And why does the evangelist write it down for us? Especially for us now, 2,000 years or so after the event. Well, Jesus, when he's teaching with the parable, he's often trying to teach those who have ears to hear, eyes to see, about the way God thinks. What priorities does God have? What does God value? Um, what are the things that, or how does God think? Well, he's teaching like that because the way God thinks is oftentimes not the way human beings think at all. And the evangelist writes this down clearly in scripture so that we as a church can emulate Jesus, so we can preach and teach and make God's justice, mercy, and love known in this world. So the main question is, who makes up the 99 sheep left in a safe place? And who is the one lost sheep in mortal danger? In the past, this text was rather straightforward forward and could lead to a somewhat boring sermon. But with Today's events, and especially the Black Lives Matter movement, is taking on truly a new meaning, especially for me. A pastor taught, um, he made it very straightforward when somebody was talking about Black Lives Matter. Don't all lives matter? And yeah, Well, duh, yes, of course, but think about it this way. Um, there are a hundred sheep, but one goes missing. But the 99 begin to cry out, but what about us? Don't we matter? Of course the 99 matter, but they aren't the ones in danger. The one is in danger, and I'll say it again, black lives matter. I know of a boy who was half Asian and went to university in Wisconsin. He worked and studied very hard in this totally foreign place and But after quite a while, he began to realize that even though all the students had the same goal and they all worked hard, he was not really accepted by the multitude of other students. When he entered a room, he found himself immediately looking for another Asian face with hopes of finding acceptance and maybe a friend, but he didn't find any. Eventually, he realized he wouldn't ever be accepted by the people of this place just because he looked different. He went home, restarted his studies, feeling rather uneasy about not being accepted by the students in Wisconsin. They all had the same goals, but why didn't he feel accepted because of the way he looked? My goddaughter is a smart, beautiful, 18-year-old African-American girl, or really I should say young woman now. She, like I said, is very smart. She's inquisitive maybe to a fault, and she's even spoken at the United Nations. However, her life has been very difficult. Even in Hawaii, she didn't feel like she fit in. She was bullied, vilified, looked down upon, and deeply scarred. And with the graphic viewing of the murder of George Floyd, she has been deeply hurt and frightened. Seeing the constant violence against African Americans has truly traumatized her. In the midst of her fears, she makes it clear she wants nothing to do with white people. You have no idea how much this hurts me as her white godfather. She's my goddaughter. But what she is screaming out is born of fear and confusion, but it's also the truth. She is that lost sheep in a very, very dangerous place right now. How Jesus, working through family and friends, will be able to comfort her and bring her back into the full fold of humanity, right now I'm not exactly sure. All I know is that love conquers all fear. Love conquers hate. 
because, because love illumines the truth. Discrimination, bigotry, and hate has been around for far too long. I pray that from this day on, things will be different. I pray from this day on, people will look at themselves and think about the way they have treated each other over the past. It's easy to, be, to see the brokenness in human beings as they all yell and scream and vilify each other. Well, frankly, I feel we are all broken. We are all lost and we all need we all need to know that the Good Shepherd's looking for us. And if we open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, maybe we can see that one who is always looking for us, searching us out, giving us the promise of forgiveness and Jesus' presence from now into eternity. Love is what's going to change the world. Love is all there is. Love is what counts. Let's pray. Gracious Lord God, this is a difficult time. But your truth remains. Your presence is here. The faith that you gives us helps us to keep going on and to speak up, to speak the truth, to speak up when there is bigotry and prejudice and violence being done one against another. Lord God, melt our hearts and open our minds for we are your children and you love us in that way amen have a great evening and uh, i look forward to seeing you again and i'll uh, see you sunday